All right, so now we're going to solve exponential equations uh, using those properties of logarithms that we, uh, we talked about before. All right, so some examples of exponential equations would be like growth decay, say like population growth or, or radioactive decay, carbon dating, that type of a thing. Um, amortization payments, if uh, you, know, you take out a mortgage or a car loan or something like that. And even Newton's law of cooling is an example of, um, of exponential equations. So let's recall a couple of notes before we get started. All right, so if x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, a is greater than 0, and a is not equal to 1, then if we've got the log base a of x equal to the log base a of y, the only way that can be true is if the argument x is equal to the argument y, right? Well, this if and only if means that it goes in both directions. So if you have the log base a of x equals the log base a of y, then that means x has to equal y. But also, if you have x equals y, if you have two things equal to each other, then you can take the log of both sides um, as long as you use the same base. We'll be using that one quite a bit. You'll see in just a second. And one other one I wanted to refresh your memory on was the natural log of e to the x. Uh, and remember that just simplifies down to x, your exponent there. All right, here's our first example. Solve 5 to the x is equal to 7. Now, um, make note of what type of equation you have. It is an exponential equation because what you're trying to solve for is located in an exponent. Now, with exponential equations, more than likely you'll have to use logarithms at some point. So there are several ways to go about solving this one. I'm going to walk you through the process that, that uh, we'll be able to use for more complicated ones in a few minutes. All right, so we have two things equal to each other. So we're going to take the logarithm of both sides, right, using that note that we had just a second ago. Now, it does not matter what logarithm you take of both sides. I'm going to encourage you to take either the common log of both sides or the natural log of both sides. All right, why? Because then we can use our calculator. So let's take, uh, let's take the common log of both sides. Okay, so we'd have the log of 5 to the x is equal to the log of 7. And again, I'm showing you the concept uh, that we can use for the more complicated ones coming up. All right, so we just take the log of both sides. All right, now why does that help us? Because now we can take this exponent x and pull it down in front using that power rule property. So... All right, so x times the log of 5 is equal to the log of 7. And remember, the log of 5 is just a number, right? So this is just a number times x. So to isolate x, you divide both sides by log 5, and you get x equals log 7 divided by log 5. And to take that out to a decimal number, use your calculator, and you'd get 1.2091. All right, so... If x is 1.2091, you plug that in up here for x, you're going to get about 7. Again, because we had to round. All right, it's not going to be exactly 7. But that's the solution for x. Okay, real quick, I just want to talk about solving something like 5 to the x is less than 7. Inequalities. All right, so to solve inequalities, I'm going to encourage you to um, uh, solve them graphically. Right? Otherwise, you do the test point idea that we've talked about in previous videos. Right? So either solve this graphically or use the test point idea, and of course, you've already found your boundary point. Um, and so when you do that, you're going to get this one would be negative infinity to 1.2091 when you solve that one. All right? But I'd probably just whip out the calculator and graph it and just uh, solve it graphically. All right, so let's continue with, with the equations, because the equations we want to make sure we understand how to do analytically. So 3e to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 4. Now, this is an exponential equation because what you're trying to solve for is located as an exponent. Now, it's a good idea to isolate the term that's got the exponent on it, right, before you take the log of both sides, right? It's just going to make our life easier. So add 1 to both sides, and you get 3e to the 2x is equal to 5. And still, even at this stage, I would divide both sides by 3 first before taking the logarithm of both sides. Okay? You can you can take the logarithm here, that's fine, but you have to be very careful with the, with the left side because you have to use those properties of logarithms. So just be very careful. I'm going to encourage you to write it as e to the 2x is equal to 5 thirds. And now, since it's e to the 2x, right, take the natural log of both sides. Why? Because the natural log of e to the 2x is just 2x. And the natural log of 5 thirds is 0.5108, about. 
So then that implies that x is about 0.2554. And there's your solution. Everybody see that? All right, so isolate the term that's got the x in it and just have one thing equal to one thing and then take then you can take the log of both sides. All right, let's do one more that's a little bit longer. All right, so 6 to the x plus 3 is equal to 4 to the x. All right, so you have one thing equal to one thing, so take the log of both sides. I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides, but you could do the common log, that's fine. All right, so what good does that do us? Well, that allows us to bring the x plus 3 down in front. Now, is that correct? No, that's not correct, because the way it's written now, only the 3 is multiplied by the natural log of x, and that entire exponent, x plus 3, uh, is what was brought down, so all of that needs to be in parentheses and multiplied times the natural log of 6. Be very, very careful, all right? All right, so now remember, the natural log of 6 is just a number. The natural log of 4 is just a number. You've got x's on both sides of the equation. Our goal is to isolate x. Well, since the natural log of 6 is just a number, we can use what property over here to multiply that times x plus 3? We have the distributive property. So we take natural log of 6 and distribute it through to the x, and you'd have x natural log of 6. Distribute it through to the 3, so you'd have plus 3 natural log of 6 equals x natural log of 4. See how that worked? All right, so then we've got uh, x here, x there, so let's move the x natural log 6 over to the right side, and so we would have 3 natural log of 6 equals x times the natural log of 4 minus x natural log of 6. Now if we're going for an exact solution here, then we need to do what to that right-hand side? That's right, you've got to factor an x out. Everybody see how that happened? All right, so the natural log of 4 minus the natural log of 6, that's just a number. So we divide both sides by that number. And that's equal to x. And this is an exact solution. Okay, This is an exact solution. If you wanted the approximation, use your calculator, and you would get negative 13 point two five seven one. Everybody see that? All right? You should be able to get the exact solution, but then you should also be able to take the exact solution and come up with the approximation. All right? So just practice that with your calculator. All right, that's it for exponential equations. Um, make note, when what you're trying to solve for is located as an exponent, then you have an exponential equation. And then at some point, you're probably going to have to use logarithms in order to solve your equation. All right, that's it for exponential equations. Make sure you see the next video on logarithmic equations. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.